What you see here is not an iBike, it's a Trojan horse. I would say it's the biggest Trojan horse the bicycle industry has seen in a long time. And I'm not stopping there, I'm going to take it even further. You know the legendary phrase, hold my drink, right? Well, this is also the hold my drink, the biggest one in the short history of electric mountain bikes. In this video, I'll share my impressions, including the pros and cons I discovered after testing the bike. But above all, I want to share with you the behind the scenes story of how a drone company ended up producing such an amazing machine as this Amflo PL Carbon Pro. Let's go all in with the review. Dajong Innovations, the parent company behind this beast, has been a highly reputable drone manufacturer for over 10 years. What does it take to make a good drone? Tiny motors with high power output, lightweight batteries, and excellent software. Coincidentally, it's exactly the same thing you need to have a good e-bike. So Dajong Innovations quickly realized that the e-bike niche could be a very interesting market for them. Because they just had to readapt a technology they already had. What's happening? The bicycle sector is very insular and at first doesn't welcome those who come from outside, from other industries. So we can imagine a fictional situation where Mr. Dajang Innovations came in with his whole electrical system, motor, battery, software, screen and so on. He would knock on the doors of big western bicycle brands and present it to them and they would say, sorry, I'm tied to Shimano. Another one would say, I'm doing very well with Bosch in the German market. Someone else might respond. Hey, your brand is unknown, so why are you sharing this with me? So, faced with this situation, Mr. Dajang Innovations thought, why don't I start my own bicycle company? He recalled his cousin who made carbon bike frames two factories down and called him, asking if he was still occupied with the bike business. Yeah, well, you're going to help me. Uh, and that's how Abenox Young Flow was born. While other engines have about 85 Nemen of torque, we're going to make one with 105 Nemen surpassing the competition. In their top models, they're around 22 kilos for full power with 800 watt hour batteries. We're going to make one under 20 kilos. The top brands have their high end models above 12,000 euros. Ours is going to cost less than 10,000. This bike has two goals. The first, like any product, like any bike, is to meet the expectations of the customer who bought it. But a second goal is to convince the rest of the industry, the other bike brands, that Abenox. And the entire Dajang Innovations electric system is the best they can possibly install on their production bikes. That's why this is a real Trojan horse. Now let's move on to the more technical part, describing each point of the frame and the components that come with the bike. We're looking at an electric Enduro Beast with 160mm front suspension and 150mm rear suspension. All Kashima, Fox's highest end, featuring the impressive 36.4. We also have a Fox transfer as the dropper post and the suspension system, it's a hostling with the pivot point that we can find here. At the bottom, of course, an oversized linkage and a shock extender. Uh, it all comes ready with an ultra high definition system to be able to use the new T-Type. In this case, it's the X0, specifically for e-bikes. As for the wheels, the people at Anflow have gone all out. Not only have they made the frame, but they've also made a lot of their own components. So we have carbon rims with a 30 millimeter internal width with Sepim spokes that are completely straight, giving a very responsive feel, even for an e-bike. And the hubs are their own as well. Also pay attention to this detail. The ratchet on the rear hub is, I mean, it's insane. For tires, we have Maxxis. 2.4 on the rear, 2.5 on the front. And from there, it's very important to mention the brakes. 
because honestly, some Magura MT 7S4 pistons front and rear stock. Well, that's something you don't see every day with 203 millimeter rotors, both front and rear. And from here on, I can mention something very important, also very interesting. The crank arms are 155 millimeters in length and the computer numerical control stem from the same brand. Also in flow, which comes combined with a double rise handlebar. This one is already made of carbon. Everything you see here for a price of 9,999 euros. There is also a lower tier version, which costs 6,500 euros. In terms of geometry, it's easy to see that the numbers are very similar, really very similar to those of the specialized Turbo Levo. Here they've played it safe, basically copying the same numbers, the same geometry as the bike. Top seller so far, how does it handle? Well, I have to say that the handling of the bike is sublime for several reasons. First of all, it has to do with the weight. You know, obviously the lighter an e-bike is, the better it handles. It requires less upper body strength from you and the way you ride it is much more similar to a traditional enduro bike. Without a motor and without a battery. So there you go. This bike handles incredibly well. Now there's something else I'd like to talk about. Look, I'm going to take advantage of this climb I have here. Up there is the issue of engine noise, which is always hard to pinpoint compared to other engines. But look, now I'm pushing it to the limit. You can clearly say that it's not louder than any other engine on the market. In fact, I would classify it among the quiet ones. I also want to mention the suspension system and how it affects the driving experience. It's really very well designed. Uh, the entire kinematics of the bike work in unison and the components too uh, in situations like this. The Magora brakes give you extra stopping power, but at the same time. Then, the bike has good anti-squat, proper anti-dive, so when you accelerate, everything accelerates as a whole, and that's something you really appreciate. Well, I don't know, it's a lot of fun, what do you want me to say? I have a blast with it. Hey, as I said before, the Avinox engine and the electrical system have some incredible specs. 105 newton meters, and the engine weighs just 2.27 kilos. We're also talking about an 800 watt hour battery. You can install a 600 if you want and five real assistance modes. We have Eco, Trail, Turbo, Auto, which is the one I've used the most. And it's a combination of the previous three. Let's say that the bike, depending on what you ask of it, gives you more or less. And honestly, the power delivery in auto mode is optimal. I've really liked it. Finally, the boost. For 30 seconds in boost mode, you have 120 Newton meters and a 1000 watt peak at your disposal. The power that the rear wheel gets at that moment is overwhelming, the force it reaches. Of course, there's the walk mode to push the bike when you're off it. And a feature that I found quite relevant and interesting is being able to fully charge the bike in just two hours. As for the assist modes, I'll be completely honest with you, the one I'm using the most, almost exclusively, is the auto mode, because it makes the bike more fun. It takes away the need to keep changing the assist mode depending on the terrain, whether it's steeper or flatter. On the other hand, the algorithm controlling the bike delivers power in an excellent manner, ensuring that the wheels maintain traction on inclines without slipping. I'm really loving the car. And on the other hand, the issue of battery life. This is always subjective and it, it depends on a thousand things. The type of terrain you're on, your physical condition, your weight. But well, let's say that I, with pretty good physical condition, weighing 70 kilos, including helmet, shoes, everything. And in auto mode, which is a mode that basically gets the best out of the other three, I'm easily doing Three hours of duration, uh, 2,000, 2,200 meters of elevation gain, challenging terrain, a lot of steep slopes. Easily. It's a battery that, although it's true, 800 watt hours, let's say the feeling is that this motor has a slightly high consumption. And so those 800, I don't know, I would put them very similar to improving what it can deliver. 
the 700, I think it's 700 that a Turbo Levo has, something like that, but honestly, I, I fall short. It's a type of machine that will allow you to go on long rides. I haven't tried it, but I'm convinced that in eco mode, I can go calmly, very calmly. Just as it comes from the factory, out of the four hours of use. Me. I'm getting pretty hot over here. What about the two-inch touchscreen we have here? The truth is, it's wonderful, because no matter the light level around you, it always has the perfect brightness to see all the data. Like I said, it's a touchscreen, and honestly, it works really well, both with bare hands and with gloves. But personally, I'm glad that there's still the option to change the screens with this control located on the right side of the handlebar. The amount of data the screen gives you is overwhelming, and it's customizable too. Because I have to tell you that everything related to connecting with the app on your phone is also amazing. Because you can have all this data integrated and view it in a dual way on your phone as well. It even has a small area, let's say like a health section where the bike does a little bit of that. And the app, the service, it can provide you up to certain limits. One of these smartwatches telling you your fitness level and all that. But above all, I would highlight on one hand the ability to customize the assistance modes to your liking in the app and the security section where you can lock the bike. Set a code so that only you can start it. And the possibility that if the bike has been stolen or moved from the place where you left it, it sends you a notification to your phone saying, hey, alert. Your bike changes location and it shows you a map with your bike's location. I mean, this is amazing. Something very interesting happened to me a couple of times during testing. Did you know that leaving the batteries fully charged at 100% and not moving the bike is actually bad for the battery's lifespan? So the bike has a system of self-help where if it detects that the battery is fully charged and you're not using it, it slowly discharges itself to try not to damage the cells. And it's happened to me that maybe I charged it to 100%, came back three days later, and I hadn't touched it. Instead of being at 100%, it was already at 97% or 96%. Because the bike itself does that, it discharges it so that the battery's lifespan isn't affected. I'm going to try to do this climb with the turbo on, and at some point I'll hit the boost. And then try, uh, because the potential of these two modes, just as they come from the factory, is incredible. And it's true that the bike tends to lift up, you have to position your body really well. It's about adjusting to the sudden power increase. Also, I must say that the rear wheel at a certain moment, I don't know, the rear part is kind of unnoticeable. With enough rigidity to withstand all the force released by the hub at once. Anyway, let's see, let's go. Boost. Actually, what I find hardest with the boost is finding a climb that's steep enough a slope so that I don't hit the 25 kilometers per hour limit and it cuts off. You know what I mean? No? Before I get to the final conclusion of the whole review, I have to mention something that has really surprised me in a positive way about this bicycle. Personally, I've been a Dajang Innovations drone user for my content creation work and more for over 10 years. Uh, and, and I had no doubt that everything related to the motor, a battery, software, screens and so on would be outstanding. However, when it comes to the structure of the bicycle itself, well, honestly, my expectations were very low because this company had never created this type of product before. And this is where I got a big surprise because honestly, as soon as I took it out of the box, I started noticing quality details, signs that the development team behind this bike is not only experienced in the world of bicycles, but probably has a lot of experience in the world of enduro e-bikes. And to show you, I'm gonna give three examples that I found. To begin with, the quality of the cover for the charge mount on the frame something that other brands sometimes fail at, even in their top-of-the-line models. Uh, on the other hand, we've also seen, together with the mechanic, with the Stefano, all the cable routing through the down tube, the internal part. There are some kinds of guides that separate the cables from the battery and from the frame itself. And those guides are attached to the frame using the same mounts as the bottle holder. So this shows that there was a bit of brainstorming to try to shave off as many grams as possible and simplify the whole structure. 
And for me, the most distinctive point and the one I like the most, it has to do with this trunnion mount here on the top bar, the trunnion mount, which is nothing more than this way of attaching the shock absorber from the side instead of from one end, as is usually the case in bikes that have the shock absorber on the top bar. The trunnion is a type of mount that is often seen a lot in vertical shock absorbers because as I said, it is not at all typical in these kinds of horizontal shock absorber positions. I don't know the technical reasons that led the engineers to use this type of mount in this position. Regardless of your preference, the design undeniably gives the bike a unique character for being the first unit, the first model that comes out from this brand. And this, well, the truth is that it's something I had to say and I wanted, I wanted to acknowledge it. Pros and cons that I've been able to find in this bike, starting with the cons. Uh, the first one is the sizing issue, since the first size available, um, starting from the smallest, is an M. It's true that this M is a bit misleading because it's an M that's more on the small side, let's put it that way. It could even be considered and small, but in any case, for the catalogue to be truly complete, it would need an S and an extra small, probably. Then, the issue of rigidity in the rear at the moment when the engine delivers all its power. There I noticed maybe a lack of rigidity, not optimal rigidity, let's put it that way. I haven't been able to tell if it comes from the wheel or if it's something to do with the rear triangle. Or is it simply that those 120 Newton meters with that 1000 watts of peak power are just insane? But it's true that at some point I felt like something wasn't right back here. Maybe when switching to the mullet setup. It's something that might be minimized, I don't know because I haven't tried it, but it's something that's there. And finally, a detail that has to do with how this test unit arrived. And I know for a fact that this has also happened to more people with bikes that have been arriving in this first batch. And the thing is, the cable, the housing for the dropper post was pinched inside the frame, so the dropper post didn't work properly. This is silly because obviously if you buy the bike at a shop, your shopkeeper will fix this before handing it over to you. And in the future, obviously Flo will get this feedback and these are things that won't happen anymore. But it's something I wanted you to know. It's just that at least my mechanic had to take apart the engine to fix this problem, which could have been solved in five minutes. If we talk about the pros, obviously the first thing I would mention is the performance, the overall performance of the electric system, which is incredible. I mean, everything is excellent. Engine, battery screens, controls, everything is incredible. The little noise the engine makes, maybe the only thing that's not excellent, staying at a low notable, is the issue of consumption. But I wouldn't consider it a downside at all. Of course, everything related to the quality of the finishes, for me, has a very high quality. This bicycle is practically from a premium brand, or even a premium brand itself. I would say, uh, and of course, the weight, which is linked to handling. For me, these are very positive things about having sensations as close as possible to a traditional bicycle. And not so much like a 25 kilo fridge going down the mountain. And of course, the point to highlight is the balance between price and the quality of the components that come with the bicycle. Who do I recommend buying an Amflow to? Well, the truth is that unlike other models that have very specific niches, this bike is practically good for any potential customer who is looking for an electric enduro bike. It is true that those of you who have more experience with other motors, with other electric systems, who have already tried maybe three or four different models, you will really be able to appreciate what Dajiang Innovations is trying to offer us with this whole ecosystem. Now it's time for you to rate this beast in the comments. On a scale of one to 10, what score would you give it? Give me a big like on the video if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe because there will be more videos coming with this bike. And there, I'll answer any questions you might leave in the comments section of this video that were left unanswered and I couldn't respond to. Anyway, be very happy and I'll see you soon. Bye bye.